All right, students, let's look at another example of how to do a row reduced echelon form to rewrite a matrix in row reduced echelon form. Uh, use Gauss Jordan elimination uh, to row reduce this matrix. Uh, and so, um, what I want to do again, I want to, the goal is to get uh, ones on the diagonal, zeros wherever else we can. And so this matrix always already starts with the one in the upper right hand corner, right where we need it uh, up here. And then what I want to do is create zeros below that. I like to work the first column and then move over to the next column and work your way across column by column. So I've got the one there in the first row. I want to turn the five underneath it into a zero. And so I can do that using the row operation uh, I'm going to multiply row 1 times negative 5, negative 5 times row 1, add it to row 2, and put it back into row 2. So that very first calculation will be negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5, add it to positive 5, and we'll end up with 0. All right? Uh, and the operation... After that, the other operation, I want to turn the 9 into a 0. And so I'm going to take negative 9. It's a positive 9 there. You just switch the sign. Multiply it by the 1 that we have in row 1. Add it to row 3 and put it into row 3. So I'm going to do two operations at once. It'll make life a little bit quicker if we can do that there. Uh, so uh, those are the two operations I want to do. Let's just code it into Excel. I'm going to start with the equal sign because I want to start with a formula. I want to take negative 5 times the value in row 1 and then add it to row 2. So I'm going to take negative 5 times cell B2 and add it to cell B3. All right, and it gives me the 0. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I'm going to leave the first row the same. Let me start with that. I want to start with leaving the first row the same. So I want my first, my new first row just to be the same as the old first row. So I'm going to say for first row, I'm going to say equals B2. And then underneath that, that's when I want to do the negative 5 times what's in the first row added to what's in the second row. And then the, the other row operation I want to do is negative 9 times what's in row 1. Whoops, I forgot the equal sign. No, I got the equal sign. I forgot the times. Uh, times what's in row one, add it to row three. All right. And that gives me the one zero zero column that I want there in the first row. And then I'm going to use the fill, copy, fill, sort of whatever it is, fill in that formula. And that will perform those operations across the entire row. And I have uh, the one here in the upper right hand corner where I want it. And the rest of that uh, column is zero. Okay. Uh, and so now I'm going to move over to the next column. And my goal when I get here is that I have the zero, one, zero. I got the, the zero in the top row, the one on the second row, and then a zero again on the bottom row. I'm trying to get that sort of format there. Uh, and so I want to start by converting that negative 10 into a one. And so uh, I want to convert the negative 10 there into the one. So I'm going to leave the first row alone to start with. So I'm going to say that that equals B6. I'm going to leave that first row alone. You can always turn a number into a one by just dividing by, uh, in this case, by negative 10. If I divide by negative 10, um, I should get one there in that second column. And let's just leave the bottom row the same. So what I'm doing here in terms of a row operation is I'm going to take uh, negative one tenth times row one, or row two, sorry, and put it back into row two spot. I'm going to do that row operation, uh, but I have to do it all the way across. And I start with doing it in the first column. Uh, so uh, the first row stays the same. It equals, uh, so this cell here is equal to B6. The next row, I want to take the value and divide by negative 10. Uh, and the last row, I want to divide, I want to just leave it the same as well. All right, and that should convert the 10 
uh, the spot where the negative tan is into a one as I copy this across. And sure enough, that, that negative 10 turned into a one. And then with the one, I wanna create zeros above and below that. I wanna turn the two into a zero and the negative two, 20 into a zero into that second column. So what I wanna do in terms of row operations is I wanna take a negative two, multiply it by row two, add it to row one and put it in a row one spot. So I'm gonna multiply, I'm looking here in that first row, there's a two. Uh, so if I multiply by the opposite of it, multiply the one by negative two, and then add the two together, I'll end up with a zero. I'm gonna leave row two exactly the way it is, uh, but row three, I wanna turn the negative 20 into a zero. So it's negative 20, I'm gonna take a positive 20, multiply it by the one in row two, add it to row three, and give me a new row three. And so let's have Excel do those calculations for us here. Again, you always have to put your stuff here in the first column. You wanna start entering your formula in the first column, even though you're really trying to manipulate the second column, it makes uh, copying things across uh, much easier. So I wanna take negative two multiplied by what's in row two. So that would be the zero and then add it to row one. And the nice thing about that is because I'm working in that column with the zero, the one in that first row, first column is not gonna change. I'm multiplying negative two times zero and adding it to one, that value is gonna stay one. Uh, I'm leaving the second row the same in this step. So I'm gonna say equals B 11. Uh, and then the third row I wanna do equals 20 uh, multiplied by, uh, oops, I gotta, there's 20. Multiply that by what's in row two and add it to row three to give me my new row three. Uh, again, there's, since you're working with zeros in the first column, it appears that nothing has changed. But if you copy that formula, drag that formula across, um, it will fill in and it does fix our middle row the way we want it to. So it's zero, one, zero. That, uh, sorry, that middle column, that second column is the zero, one, zero. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, now what I'd like to do is move over to the next column. And the problem is though, uh, I've got a zero there uh, and not a one or not a number. So there's no way I can turn this number into a one uh, the only value where I've got numbers is in the second row, but if I try to change this number and move it to the third row, what's going to happen is it's going to go back up here and mix the, mix, miss, uh, mess up the row I've already fixed. So I'm going to leave this column by itself. Uh, I'm going to leave these zeros here. Uh, what I need to do to make it really in row release special on form is go to this last row, and I'm going to make that one. Uh, a one zero zero is what I want to do. Do row operations to make that a one zero zero. So let's leave the first row the same this time. Let's leave the second row the same this time. Uh, and I have a negative one, and what I really want is a positive one. So I'm going to take that value, and you can either divide by negative one or you can multiply by negative one. I'm going to take what's in that third row and divide by one or multiply by negative, divide by negative one or multiply by one, either one of those will change that from a negative one down here to a positive one. And then I need above that one, I need to turn those two values into zeros. Oh, hey, my row operations aren't scrolling when I scroll. Huh, that's kind of a bummer. Oh, well, uh, so I wanna turn the two values above that into zeros. So what I'm going to do is I see there's a 1.2 in that first row. So I'm just going to change the sign. I'm going to take negative 1.2 uh, and multiply it by, let's write it out. Uh, that gives me problems there when I do it that way. Um, now I need to get back. Sorry, switch tools here. I want to be back in working in Excel and not the overlay that I'm writing on here. 
All right, so back in my overlay, uh, what I want to do is I want to take uh, negative 1.2, uh, multiply it by what's in row one, or multi sorry, multiply it by what's in row three, and add it to row one to give me a new row one. So negative 1.2 times the one plus the positive 1.2 should be zero. And similarly, I've got a 1.4 in row two. So I'm gonna take a negative 1.4, multiply it by the one I've got here in row uh, three, add it to row two, and put that in a row two spot to give me a new row two. Uh, so let's go and do those calculations here. Uh, I'm gonna put it over here on this spot. So for that first row, I wanna take, uh, negative 1.2, sorry, negative 1.2 times what's in row three, add it to what's in row one. And I'm not doing it on, well, I have to do it all the way across when I do these calculations. So I wanna do that. Oh, it stays one there. The middle row is gonna stay exactly the, uh, no, middle row is gonna change two. I'm gonna take uh, negative 1.4 times what's in row three and add it to what's in row uh, two, negative 1.4 times row three. And this bottom column, that will turn into a zero there. One times uh, negative 1.4 plus a positive 1.4 will be zero. And the bottom row, I'm leaving the same. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. All right, and if I copy and paste that across, copy that equation across, so I'll highlight the selection, let up on your mouse key, come back into this bottom corner, push down on your mouse to collect, and then drag without letting up over, it looks like I've got four spots to go over, and it will fill in that column. And now my matrix is in row reduced echelon form. As you look across the rows, the very first number you come to is a one. And as soon as you hit that one, all the rest of the column that that one is in is zero, okay? Second row, the first number you come to that's not zero is a one. And when you find that one, what's above and what's below it, the rest of that column is zero. And then if I look at the bottom row, if I come across the bottom row, the first non-zero number I come to is a one. And when I'm there, everything above that turned into a zero. And that's how I know I'm in row reduced echelon form. That would be the row reduced matrix in there. Now, if this was a system of equations, uh, it would not have a solution, most likely, because of the, the one there at that far end. Uh, but that's, a, that's maybe a thing for a different video. All right, here's another example. We'll see if... Uh, um, the next day or two, I'll probably, uh, uh, if you look if you look in the folder, you maybe find some more examples of Gauss-Jordan elimination. Uh, it's kind of tricky to do by hand. Uh, it takes a while to get the process down, but you want to, the way I like to do it is like to be systematic. Work column by column, get the one in the upper left-hand corner, create zeros below it, move over the next column, uh, create a one there on that, uh, that diagonal, coming down and then create zeros above and below it. And then I move over, try to get a one ideally in this location, but that's not possible in this case because there's a zero there. Uh, and so then I move over to the last column, move across there until I can get to that last column and make a one and then zeros above that to get in row reduced echelon form. I like to work column by column by column until I run out of rows that I can work with basically.